Gaijin Entertainment presents The Shooting Range You are watching The Shooting Range, a weekly show for all tankers and airmen of War Thunder. In this episode, The Winged Death, The Bristol Bowfighter, Man Down, What Happens When You Lose a Crew Member and How to Get Him Back, Hotline, The Developers Answer Questions That You Left in the Comments, But First, Let's start with Crunch Point, how to engage the enemy on your own terms. Some people are happy just to wander around the battlefield shooting at enemies at every opportunity that presents itself. And well, that can be fun, but there is a certain joy in controlling the flow of battle in a way that allows you to engage the enemy on your own terms to deal maximum damage while still retaining a chance to get out of the firefight alive. It's an art and a skill which can be learned. Of course, no battle is ever the same and we won't be able to discuss all possible scenarios. But we'll try to highlight a few common and or interesting situations which you can find yourself in and provide you with some useful tips. Ok, imagine this, you're on your way to the control point, minding your own business, and then your teammates highlight an enemy vehicle in a minimap right around the corner. It's a heavy tank, a very tough target that is dangerous to approach head on. The first thing you should do is to make sure that the enemy is not looking in your direction and therefore is unaware of your presence. In order to do that, you'll have to get closer to the obstacle, turn your gun, and then hold your free look button to take a look around. Take pains not to reveal the hull of your vehicle to the enemy. If it turns out that the enemy tanker is actually looking the other way, that's your chance. Roll out and blow them away. Ok, what if you know that there is a group of enemy armored vehicles coming your way? If your gun has a decent reload speed, you might have the chance to deal a massive blow to the opposing team. Try to find a place behind some well-placed cover. Now comes the best part. Do not open fire at the first tank you see. Wait for the group to roll past you and then shoot at the vehicle that passed you last. The tanks at the front of the column will be taken unawares. It is quite possible that by the time you dealt with the first opponent, the others will still not understand what just happened and thus become easy targets as well. Now let's try a completely different scenario. You're fighting one-on-one -on -one around an obstacle and the opponent is good. He or she is driving a nimble vehicle and is in no rush to expose its vulnerable spots to your fire. In the end, nobody can lend a decisive blow. What do you do? The answer is simple. Shoot the opponent's tracks off. A lot of tankers panic at their loss of mobility and start to repair their vehicle straight away. That's your chance. Onwards to victory! But then there comes times when even the best plans fail. You get hit. It is possible to get away, of course, and the damage to the systems can still be repaired. But sometimes you also lose crew members, which is a whole different problem. Alas, but in many cases it is much easier to incapacitate a crew member rather than destroy a machine of war, and without its crew, even the most advanced combat vehicle is just an empty shell, an expensive pile of metal. So what exactly happens in the game when you lose a crew member? Let's say your loader was knocked out. If you still have your commander or another extra tanker such as your radio operator or machine gunner, one of them will immediately take the place of the fallen soldier, abandoning his previous duty inside your tank. You basically get a new loader and therefore no special penalties to the reload time. If there are no spear crewmen available, which means that you are left with your driver and your gunner, then it's tough luck. The gunner has no other choice but to load the gun himself, that's doing two jobs at the same time. So you get a massive penalty on reload time, it now takes twice as much time. Basically have two critical crew members that cannot abandon their jobs whatever the circumstances, the driver and the gunner. If your crew consists of only these two, the loss of any of them would mean the loss of the vehicle. Other tankers can move around and replace their fallen comrades, albeit usually they're not as good at these jobs as proper specialists. They do it in this specific order. First, the radio operator, then the commander, then the loader. If there is a man for the job, you get no penalty. When you have no replacement, that's when the penalty kicks in. Now for some good news. 
The latest update introduced a new game mechanic called Reinforcement, which allows you to get a new crew member from reserves once per battle. It's all quite simple. In realistic or simulator battles, you can request reinforcements only at a capture point that belongs to your team and only if you still have at least two tankers left. Moreover, you have to draft a crew member manually. In arcade mode, the draft can be requested at any point on the map and happens automatically the very moment you end up with one crew member. You also have the option to ask for some new blood at any time if you're riding with an incomplete crew. Bear in mind that it takes some time for the new guy to get to your vehicle, in any game mode that is, and during the wait, your tank cannot move. Use this feature with caution. One last thing, reinforcement becomes available only after your research modification of the same name. Each individual replacement tanker called in also costs silver lions. Do not forget to take care of that before the match, or there will be no reinforcements at all. And now, let's soar up into the skies, where we're going to talk about a peculiar British plane, which is slow, sluggish, and very deadly. What's the first plane that pops into your mind when you think about the Royal Air Force? Supermarine Spitfire, most likely, the bane of the Luftwaffe. What about torpedo bombers? Well, these are less common and therefore do not get as much attention. But in War Thunder, in the hands of a skilled pilot, one of these aircraft is nothing short of a death with two wings. We're talking about the Bristol Bullfighter. There are three modifications of this plane in the game, Mark VI, Mark X and Mark 21. There are some major differences in armament and specifications, but the idea is always pretty much the same. Your mission is to obliterate enemy ground vehicles and any plane that dares to face the bullfighter in a head-on attack. The earliest modification, the Mark VI, is the hardest to fly. That's not because of the sheer size of the aircraft or the relative lack of mobility. It is because of Espano Mark I cannons that deal roughly as much damage as the Orlikons on the BF-109E3, which is honestly not much. It's not a deal breaker though. At least to get four of these puppies is almost a thousand rounds of ammo. The fact that you can carry torpedoes is also a considerable advantage. The Bullfighter Mark X boasts an all-new radar system and much heavier armament. You get Hispano Mark IIs and a bonus in the form of six machine guns. And that's not all. The Mark X can also carry even more ammo. Alas, the changes make the plane more cumbersome. But let's ask ourselves, do we actually need to be agile? Come on, we're flying a torpedo bomber. And on attacks are a jam. By the way, the Mark X is a very good pick for combined battles. While hunting ground targets, you're not limited to just rockets. You can also reliably turn enemy tanks into funeral pyres with AP rounds. Just aim at their engine and transmission compartments. An unchallenged bullfighter can set the whole map aflame. The last version of the deadly aircraft, Mark 21, is the Australian take on the bow. The aircraft has been given a new nose cone, more powerful engines, the machine guns were also upgraded to a respectable 12.7mm caliber. What's interesting is that the aircraft has become even more sluggish and less responsive. Furthermore, this modification faces tougher competition at its considerably higher PR. That said, it's still the good old bullfighter, the formidable hunter that can destroy any target it locks on. Here's some advice, don't bother climbing, down at the deck is your domain. Focus more on ground targets, engage other planes only when provoked. In arcade battles, a few bullfighters up your sleeve is one of the best ways to end the match at the top of the leaderboard, especially if you're playing it safe. The rocket mounts are set very wide apart, so don't try to hit the same target with both rockets. It is generally better to aim with either left or the right one. And the last thing, do not underestimate your turret. Yes, it has very limited field of fire, but when the enemy is firmly on your six, it can be a lifesaver. Finally, it's time for the traditional last part of our show, Hotline, developers answering questions from the comments. Strictly speaking, it's not the most serious-minded section of the show. If you want answers to be given with solemn faces, 
feel free to appeal to the official forums. Here we'll have a more lighthearted discussion of the big questions of War Thunder. We hope you like it. The first question comes from a player called Mutu Kumaran. We hope we pronounced it right. Will you add a mode where planes, tanks, and navy vessels will all battle together? Please. The answer is maybe, as some kind of a special event, but not as a regular thing. The truth is, this kind of engagement is devilishly hard to balance to make it interesting for everyone, not to mention the fact that this sort of encounter was quite a rare thing in real history. And it's easy to understand why. Navy vessels and tanks make for a really awkward pair of combatants. Stuart Garris writes, Help! I'm Canadian! And I often build igloos for fun in the winter, put tons of maple syrup on a lot of food, and barbecue during the winter. However, there are barely any Canadian vehicles for me to use to execute Canadian bias. Any chance we'll see more Canadian vehicles in the future? Hello, Stuart! Actually, we've just added a new Canadian vehicle to the game, the Canadian Ram Mark II Cruiser Tank. It's a premium vehicle in the US research tree. Please check it out, it's quite a beast at its rank. Then a question from Loran Ban. In naval battles, will kamikazes be a thing? Nope, we're not planning to add any special kamikaze planes or kamikaze functionality to the game. Historically, the Japanese used this tactic not because they wanted to, but because they were desperate, because they felt that there was no other choice. Luckily, for our players it's not the case in War Thunder. And why would you want to play as a flying bomb where you can be a deadly hunter? A player called Zero Cookie Cake asks, Question. With the addition of ships, will nations be getting new aircraft to country them? Sure. We won't leave our pilots hanging. You'll get some new toys soon enough. Finally, a very important question from Mr. Fancy Raptor. So, uh, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Enough to outfit a tank battalion with improvised log armor? That's it for today, but feel free to write your comments in the questions below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. See you in the shooting range.